Good morning. Welcome to worship. We've reached the month of June. Who would have thought we'd still be sharing online services instead of face to face? We continue to hope that by the end of the month we can go back to uh, corporate worship in our church. But until then, we continue to thank God for the blessing of technology that allows us to meet virtually, if not physically. But the scripture says, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Right at the beginning of our worship, let's come before God in prayer. Father God, we thank you that your love is such that you gave all you had in order that we might live. We thank you for your forgiving grace and for inward assurance of salvation sealed in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you have a plan for each of our lives and each decision we make. May you be our guide and comfort so that in all things we may do your will. We pray your blessing upon each person worshipping with us today, whether near or far. May we each know your presence surrounding us throughout this day and all the days that lie ahead. And may you continue your work within each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, when I was in Scotland the other week, I managed to do a bit of walking, mostly along canal towpaths. But the weather was quite nice most of the time, and when you're walking with friends, it doesn't seem such hard work. But according to medical authorities, walking is one of the best forms of physical exercise. It stimulates the heart and lungs, strengthens the bones and muscles, increases the blood flow throughout the body, and reportedly contributes to loss of excess weight. But today we are not talking physical walking, we are talking spiritual walking and looking at the importance of walking with God all throughout our lives. I'm going to sing a song together just to set the scene for our thinking this morning. It's number 392 in your songbook. It says, teach me to dance to the beat of your heart, teach me to move in the power of your spirit, teach me to walk in the light of your presence, teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Let's sing together. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to move in the power of your spirit. Teach me to walk in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope in the day of your coming. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. You are the rhythm of life, created heaven and earth. In you is joy without measure. So like a child in your sight, I dance to see your delight. For I was made for you. Teach me to 
you know that the average pair of feet takes between 7,000 and 8,000 steps a day? About two and a half million steps a year. Makes you tired just thinking about it, doesn't it? That means in an average lifetime, you could walk over 115,000 miles, but thankfully we are not expected to do it all at once. At the moment, I have joined the Salvation Army Pulse Challenge, and I have my tracker here tracking my steps. And I'm trying to do as many as I can each day so the team I am part of can stay near the top of the leaderboard. You know, the first man to walk around the world was a man by the name of David Kunst of Minnesota. He was born in 1939 and his trek began on the 20th of June 1970 and ended on October the 5th 1974. His walk was officially stated to be 14,452 miles and the trip took four and a half years during which time David went through 22 pairs of shoes. And at the completion of his historic journey, an auction was held with eager bidders paying $150 for his right shoe and $170 for his left shoe. Now, most people would find it neither appealing nor practical to be like David and accept the challenge to hike around the world. So we're not talking physical walking today, but we are all on a spiritual walk. God wants us to understand that the Christian life is a walking journey which requires dedication and courage and persistence. It calls for self-surrender, a fully yielded life and an intense desire to please God rather than please ourselves. The spiritual walk of which the Bible speaks is a dynamic exercise of faith and the successful completion of this walk is not dependent upon your natural or physical resources but upon the strength, the leadership, the controlling influence of the Holy Spirit. The character from scripture we are using today is Enoch. He is one of the most striking personalities of the Old Testament. He's one of only two men of whom it is said he walked with God. He's one of only two men who lived on this earth and went to heaven without passing through the portals of death. He's the only one, except Jesus, of course, of whom it is written that he pleased God. And the reason for this remarkable um, quality and success of this man is recorded in the book of Genesis. It's only a few verses um, of scripture this morning, so I'm reading them my, uh, myself this morning from the book of Genesis chapter 5, and it's verse 21. It says, when Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. And after he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Although Enoch lived 365 years, Enoch walked with God. And then he was no more because God took him away. And we don't want to get tied up in the years because years, I think, were calculated a bit differently in Old Testament times. But let me suggest several things regarding this spiritual walk that I think are important. Firstly, this is a walk with God. Our text says Enoch walked with God. And this is not an ordinary walk. You are walking with God. However strange it may seem to our finite minds, it is possible, according to the word of God, to live in the realm of the Spirit and walk in fellowship with our Heavenly Father. Enoch's walk emphasises an important relationship between humanity and divinity, between God and man between that which is weak and limited and that which is powerful and unlimited. Think of the high and holy privilege of walking with God. What an exciting thought that I can walk with God. God who clothes himself with honour and majesty. God who created heaven and earth. God who, as it says in one of the Psalms, set the earth on its foundation 
and it can never be moved. I can walk with a God like that. So how can I, a mere mortal, a mere human being, walk with God? Another verse from scripture from the New Testament in the book of 1 John says, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. See, true fellowship with God and true fellowship with one another are made possible through and by Jesus Christ, God's son. The walk of which the Bible speaks means that you have discovered the road of truth. The quest for truth is as old as the human race. Pilate was not the first man to ask what is truth. People of every generation have asked that question. The followers of Buddha have answered it by saying truth is following the teachings of Buddha. The disciples of Confucius have answered it by saying truth is observing the teachings of Confucius. The devotees of the prophet Muhammad have answered it by saying Allah is God and Muhammad is his prophet. But the voice of Jesus Christ speaks loud and clear above all others as he declares, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to God except by me. Some people say we need to be broad-minded, all roads lead to heaven. You go your way, I'll go mine, and we'll arrive at the same destination. But the truth reveals there is only one way to heaven. It does matter what you believe. And our faith must be based upon truth. The psalmist says, teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Let's sing another song together. Song 756 in your songbook. It says, I want to walk with Jesus Christ all the days I live of this life on earth to give to him complete control of body and of soul. Let's sing together.
The second point is that this is a walk of faith. The Bible says of Enoch that he pleased God. How was he able to please God? Well, the writer of Hebrews tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Enoch could walk with God because he was a man of faith and placed his trust in God. God is a great big God, the God of might and miracle, the God of unlimited power, and he will reveal himself to us if we believe and trust him. He will shake heaven and earth in order to reveal his glory and his power to his people. Walking in faith means walking in power, for God is power. His power is at work in us and through us and for us. Our lives don't have to be sick and anemic. We can be people of faith, keenly aware of divine grace for every need. What were the Apostle Paul's words? Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And walking by faith also means growing in Christ. In the Bible, in Colossians, we are told, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. In this one passage, Paul talks about four elements of the Christian experience, walking, growing, building and overflowing. Walking expresses life, growing expresses an inner power. Building up shows progress of character until God perfects his work in us. And overflowing with thankfulness reflects abundance of joy and proper attitude for the wonderful benefits that God gives to us along the way. If you walk with God, you will grow in Christ. You will walk, grow, build and overflow with thankfulness. The reason some people have so little joy in their Christian experience is that they are not following these four steps. As one writer put it, some people don't grow, build and overflow. They just sit, soak and sour. But true life, the Christian life, is a growing life. Our life must first be built downwards, rooted in Christ. Then we build upwards, built up in him, established in the faith. Then overflowing joy and thanksgiving are the results of this dynamic growth experience in our Lord Jesus Christ. When we walk with God by faith, we will also experience intimate fellowship with him. We have discovered, as did Enoch, that walking and living in the presence of God is an experience of blessed fellowship and sweet communion. You know, it's always a nice experience to walk with someone you love and care for. A friend, a family member, even the dog. Our relationship with our companion on the walk makes the walk all the better. God's love for us and our love for God is a relationship of beauty and blessedness. Song 756 in our songbook says, He walks with God, who speaks to God in prayer and daily brings to him his daily care. Possessing inward peace, he truly knows a heart's refreshment and a soul's Repose. And the final verse says, he walks with God who turns his face to heaven and keeps the blessed commands by Jesus given, his life upright, his end untroubled peace, whom God will crown when all his labours cease. Let's sing that song together. to 
refreshment and a soul's final point I want to make today is that this walk leads home. In Hebrews, we read, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. The word used in the original scripture is translated. This is an old Latin word which simply means carried over or carried across. God carried Enoch across to the other side. So whether by fiery chariot or jet-propelled cloud, God whisked Enoch away and took him home. God carried him across, carried him across death. You know, death is that force that divides this world from the world to come. God somehow picked up Enoch and carried him across to the other shore. One moment walking with God in time, the next in eternity. One moment, communing with God by faith, the next by sight. Enoch's life of faith was at last crowned by an abundant entrance into the life of the perfect fellowship. If you've ever seen the musical The Blood of the Lamb, I'm sure you will remember that very emotive scene at the end where the queue of people line up to enter into heaven. And they go behind the screen and come out on the other side wearing their white clothing. This was taken from the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation. And the verse is a very pointed promise. It says, you have a few people who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. He that overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white. What a wonderful promise. We shall walk with him in white. White garments in heaven signify purity and perfection and holiness. It doesn't matter whether it's a white robe or a three-piece white suit or a totally new design from heaven's wardrobe. The important thing is that we shall walk with God in everlasting perfection. Now we walk by faith. But then our eyes shall be opened to the fullness of all his eternal wonders. Now we walk with limited understanding. But then life's most baffling mysteries will be resolved in the light of eternal wisdom. Yes, this walk with God leads home. Let's be sure that we daily, as the scripture says, walk worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and his glory. 
Her final song asks a few questions this morning. It says, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And the second verse says, are you walking daily by the Saviour's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Let's sing that song together. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? final benediction. And now to thee we render our thanks for mercies past, with grateful hearts imploring thy favour to the last. And at the great awakening may we be found above with saints and angels praising thy providence and love. Amen. Jesus Christ is born.